Today I'm gonna to show you guys how I replace pins on the backs of brooches. I'm gonna get through this content the best way I can. I do have a tripod and I'm gonna see how that works for doing this content. My setup for doing YouTube videos is very unsophisticated, just so you guys know. I don't have any really high tech or special equipment. I do the best I can with what I have. These are the brooches that were in the little baggies that came from the estate sale that my cousin got for me. And some of them are missing pins. I don't think I showed all of these. This one has nothing wrong with it's it. a really good one. Looks like someone got something on the back of it, so I'm gonna have to see if I can clean that. This end is broken off, so this won't be repairable. It could always be used for crafting or for turning it into something else, like a pendant. This one's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. This one's also okay. It's not missing a pin. It's missing a few rhinestones, but isn't that cute? Jesus is the heart of the season. And I'm not sure what this was. So I'm gonna set it to the side. This one has some wear on it, a little ladybug pin. This is another piece that could be used just for crafting. These are the main pieces that are repairable. And this one I've already done a repair to, so I wanted to show that to you guys. Zoom in on it so you can get a really good look at it. So this is the part I've replaced and it works just fine. I did wear it to see how it was gonna hold up and it held up just fine. Before I get started, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of different things that you'll need to know. The first thing is I'm going to zoom in on this part of the brooch. This repair works for brooches that have this type of a pin holder. You can see that it's just two pieces that come up and on the inside, it has these little nub pieces that poke out. Here's another example of that. You can see it has these little pieces that poke out. Then on this last brooch, you can see it has the same thing. Brooches like these that have that type of mechanism for holding the pin. Those are the kind of brooches that this repair will work on. These are the supplies that I'm gonna use. You can get these in any store that sells crafting supplies for jewelry. These are head and eye pins. You can also use jewelry wire. I'm not gonna use that today. This is 20 gauge wire, and the reason I'm not gonna use it is it's not very stiff. I don't feel like it would be stiff enough to hold up for a pin. And this is another type of jewelry wire. This one is a much heavier gauge. This is the perfect gauge for replacing the pins. I can't remember what the gauge on this wire is, but you can see it's really stiff. The problem with this is that when you get a thicker gauge wire, a lot of times it's not gonna fit properly so that you can actually close the brooch. So that's something that you probably need to measure or check before you go and you purchase any jewelry wire to use in this project. You'll want to make sure that it's gonna fit and you'll also want to make sure that it's stiff enough. These are the tools that I'm gonna be using. You can also get these at most stores that sell jewelry supplies. These are round nose pliers and you can use these for making bells and jump rings. And these are flat-nosed pliers. They also have a cutter on them for cutting wire. 
So I'm gonna to try to do this using my tripod so you guys can actually get a good view of what I'm doing. And we'll see how this works out. So I'm gonna start with this brooch. This is a Christmas tree brooch. And you can see that the pin is missing on it. Originally, I was going to use a head pin to do this. The problem is it's simply not going to be long enough. Instead, I'm gonna be using this jewelry wire. It's a heavy gauge jewelry wire. I'm gonna use these pliers. These are rounded nose pliers, and I'm gonna grip a piece of wire at the end, and I'm just gonna loop it around Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. And it makes a loop. Then I'm going to tighten this loop up. Now I've already prepared a piece and I've got it cut the right length and I'm gonna show that to you. What happened was I was doing this and I realized that I wasn't recording after I'd already done it. So this is the piece that I've already prepared and you can see where I tightened the loop up. As we'll recall, I mentioned earlier that this has little nubs inside. The loop that I've made is going to fit right inside of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it there and I'm gonna take my flat nose pliers and I'm just gonna tighten it up. You guys hear noise in the background? There's a lot of noise going on in my house. My dishwasher is running because I've been trying to get some housework done today. And occasionally you will hear my dog pitter pattering around on the floors. Okay, so you don't wanna to squeeze too hard, but you wanna squeeze it enough that it's in there secure. This is sturdy and you can see how it looks on the end. And I'll do some close-ups of it. One thing that I did want to mention is when you cut these eye pins or the wire, it's not gonna have an extremely sharp point like the original pen had, but it will still penetrate through clothing or whatever you're gonna attach it to. This is the next pen that I'm going to do, this little bird pen. And I believe I'll be able to use an eye pen for that. This is a gold toned eye pen and that's gonna work out perfectly. If you're using the jewelry wire, always make sure that the wire is going to fit inside of this part. This is the wire I was using before, and you can see that it, it wouldn't even fit inside of there. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this and you're using jewelry wire. So this is gonna work for me. This is gonna fit. This is a head pin. You can see it has this little flat head on it. I'm gonna cut that off with my wire cutters. I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and I'm going to grip it just like I did on the last one. And I'm going to bend it over to form the loop. And there we have the loop on that one. I don't think this needs to be tightened up. But just in case, I'll tighten it just a little bit. And that's what it's gonna look like. I'm going to place it inside and when you place it inside, you wanna make sure that the loop part is centered between the two nubs that I talked about earlier. I'm gonna hold it steady and give it a gentle squeeze.
Now that I've done that, I've secured the pin. At this point, I could leave it like this or I can cut the tip down just a little bit. I don't wanna cut the tip too short, so what I'm gonna do is leave it closed and go in with my wire cutters and just give it a little snip. And there you have it, all repaired. This is the last brooch that I'm going to do. This is the Austria brooch. Again, I'm gonna make sure that the wire is going to fit through the closure. It's not too thick to fit through the closure. Gonna go ahead and cut the head off of the pin. And if you're using an eye pin that has the rounded part at the end, you, you just cut that off also. I'm gonna grab this with my round nose pliers, grip it tightly. I'm going to bend that over to form the loop. You can see there where I've made a loop in it. Then I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to turn this the other way because I am right-handed and it makes it a lot easier. So this needs to be opened up just a little bit. Be very careful if you have to open this up because you don't want to break it off. Just very gently. Now that it's opened up wide enough, I'm going to place the circular part between the two little nubs that I spoke about earlier. The hardest part of this is holding it steady. I'm gonna tighten that up with gentle pressure. Still a little bit loose. So I've secured the pin and now I'm going to cut it off. And there you have it, repaired. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to share this content with me. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on more content about collecting vintage and antique items. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.